G'day again. Right, so um, the low pass filter is built. So we'll just do a very quick video now just looking at the design of that filter. Um, and then we'll look at doing uh, some on air tests in due course. So just moving back to here. So the, um, the filter itself is a half wave, it's a low pass filter. Um, it's two stages back to back. So um, and this is the configuration here. We've got RF coming in, got two inductors and three capacitors. Um, and just before we start, uh, again, just sort of recapping, our inductive reactance is 2 pi FL, our frequency of operation, our inductance, and XC, our capacitive reactance, is 1 over 2 pi FC. Um, for this particular one, for the toroids, we're going to use T68-2s. Uh, they're good for about 250 odd K up, up to around 10 megs, um, which would be ideal for this particular application uh, being 80 meter. Um, it'll have a QL, uh, a loaded uh, Q of 1. Uh, our Z in and our Z out will be 50 ohms. Um, and our design parameters for this particular type of filter here is uh, the inductive reactants for L1 and L2 uh, are the same and they equal 50 ohms. The capacitive reactants for C1 and C3 are the same, and that's also 50 ohms. And our capacitive reactants for C2 is half that, so twice the capacitance, so therefore half the reactants um, will be 25 ohms. Um, what I'd like to do here, I'm going to, um, I don't want to eat too much into the 80 meter band here, which finishes at around 3.9 megahertz, so I'm going to arbitrarily just set. Um, the frequency for the, the formulas to be notionally 4 megahertz as a starting point and then we'll have to vary that um, because the values we'll come out with um, won't be exactly um, per standard values so we'll just uh, play around with that for our first one for the, the two inductors L1 and L2 um, if we rearrange this formula up here and make uh, our inductance the subject we can then substitute in our values. So 50 ohms over 2 pi times 4 megahertz gives us 1.989 microhenries. Um, now I'm just going to cut across here. I use um, an online application which um, I don't know if that's going to come up very well. Uh, it's toyroids.info is the name of the website and I apologise that uh, the, the pitch is not very good, but down the left hand side here we can select any number of toroids and then down the bottom we can throw in various values um, and it will give us various parameters. So for example, we could, and what I've done here is we came out with 1.989 microhenries. I can type that into here, then go calculate and it will tell me how many turns I require. In this particular case, when I reversed it, it came out with 18.7 turns. So what I've done now is I've cleared that, and I've gone the other way around. I've now say, well, what would 18 turns give me? So I can type in 18 turns, calculate, and it gives me for a T68-2, 1.85 microhenries. If I wanted to, and um, this is also useful when you're working out with transformers and you want to work out what the capacitive reactance is very quickly sure oops, sure you could um, type it in by hand uh, XL equals 2 pi FL or you could actually throw in here say 3.5 megahertz your inductance push calculate and it'll spit out how many ohms it is so uh, it's quite a useful program just to sort of simplify some of the maths um, and the like so anyway so for us I've gone with 18 turns and gives us 1.85 microhenries. Uh, and why I've decided to go slightly down, if I just come back to here again, um, what I don't want to do, or more the point, if I'd rounded up to 19 turns, then the frequency at which that would equal 50 ohms would be 3.8 megahertz. Um, by going down to 18 turns, the frequency at which that would be 50 ohms turns out to be 4.3 megahertz. And what I don't want to do is have this 3 dB point here sneaking this way too much, otherwise I'm going to start to eat into my 80 meter band. So I prefer to push that 
3db point further to the right just to make sure that I've got uh, max pass band or least attenuation more the point uh, across the the 80 meter band so that's why I've elected to select um, 18 turns which give me that 4.3 megs right so then moving down to um, C1 and C3 um, same approach if we just rearrange this formula here and make uh, capacitance the subject we can then substitute in um, 1 over 2 pi again 4 megs 50 ohms comes out 795 picofarads a non-standard value um, if I was being exact then I could use say two capacitors in parallel I could use say a 680 in parallel with um, 150 trim capacitor um, but what I'm going to do here I'm just going to keep things sort of simple and just run with standard values so I'm going to evaluate um, the two standard values around that one so 820 picofarads and 680 picofarads so if you look at 820 picofarads again the frequency um, at which that becomes 50 ohms turns out to be 3.8 megahertz whereas if I go with 680 picofarads it comes out to be 4.6 megs so again I'm going to select 680 picofarads just to sort of push that frequency out a bit um, and then the final one is C2 so that's one which um, has a capacitive reactance of 25 ohms go to the same motions you'll come out at 1591 so I'm going to evaluate 1600 and 1500 and you can see again same logic as up here um, 1600 would be 3.9, 1500 would be 4.2 so I'm going to err on the, the slightly higher side and run with 1500 um, picofarads so that's been basically soldered into the circuit and what we can see now up on the on the oscilloscope, the oscilloscope is um, that's 3 megs so we can actually drop it down to 3, so that's 1 meg and we can see here it's 2 megs, 3 megs, 4 megs and then, um, then we're going to start to see the attenuation coming in 6, 7 and now we're getting quite low there so that's 9 megs and uh, it's significantly less than it was before so I'm quite happy with that um, that gives us definitely getting full or least attenuation or let's say no attenuation roughly across the full 80 meter band and then after the 80 meter band we're starting to see um, the attenuation coming right in so we'll live with that um, so let's just, let's just go with that for now right so that's essentially in the circuit now so coming straight out of that amplifier from uh, yesterday when it's coming straight into that low pass filter and then now that black cable there is taking it back up to the antenna switch over here and then out through the antenna and out so I think what we'll do now is wait for I'm away tonight so maybe tomorrow night we'll look at doing some on-air tests um, and we'll see if we can't make a contact and see how that sounds and then we'll look into uh, if I can just spin around and find it there it is. Um, then we'll look to utilize this old meter here and see if we can't um, do something with that um, again I think if we can make that S meter work roughly uh, for receive would be quite good and then maybe um, this red scale there which is 0 through 10 maybe you can do that in watts or something so we'll do some thought about that one <clears throat> definitely want to do that for the next rig which will be a lot more uh, sort of detailed and complex than this one this one's just a very simple rig so but I do want to play around with um, having a toy roid sitting on the output probably out here I think uh, on the output of the amplifier just sensing that forward power and then rectifying that and having it displayed here so I'll play around with that one anyway so that's probably enough for now um, nothing too much to add some good guidance on making those half wave low pass filters is in the, the solid state design for the radio amateur which is an AARRL um, uh, book uh, some good guidance in there which gives you some standard values but um, I've uh, just elected to sort of um, do some of the background maths 
just to have a look at what some of the logic was for, for the selection of those. Anyway, enough now. Um, again, season's greetings everybody, and we will catch you on the next vid. Cheers.